Hi, Nicole. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello again. Hi. So I'm going to share my screen. I also have two other people with me. Yes, they're, they're coming. Okay. Thank you. Right, here they come. Yes. And if they turn on their cameras, we'll be able to see them. Ah, there's one. Um, who are we meeting, Nicole? Is this no. or Katori? Hmm? Could you ask your friends to introduce themselves? Oh, Katori and Julie. So can you please in introduce yourself? Hi, good afternoon. So it's 4.15 uh, in the afternoon here, Saturday. And uh, I am Miss Jalisa. We're teaming up with uh, Nicole for this project. And I have here my student, Katari. So she's a fifth grader. Katori, could you unmute yourself? There you go. Hello, I'm Katori, and I'm in the fifth grade. So today we're talking about something that's really important to me personally, sustainable food production. And I can't wait yeah. to hear what the three of you are going to talk mm -hmm. about. So I'm going to mute myself and listen very carefully. So hello, everyone. As I said, I am Nicole Haraguchi, and I'll be talking about the sustainable food production. So, through my foundation, I have helped people affected by many disasters, such as floods in Venice, hunger in Brazil, typhoons in the Philippines, and wildfires in Australia. So I wanted to think of something to help solve and benefit these communities by these situations. So how can my solution to sustainable food production help these problems? Well, it can help from po population migration because it's low cost and scalable. It avoids climate change because it's carbon neutral and sus uses sustainable energy. It does not have any pollution because it has no emissions or no fertilizer runoffs. And it avoids hunger because it has a food security and no wasting water. So here are the methods of growing plants. So the first one is the aquaphonics. How it works is that whenever the fish makes feces, known as poop, it goes through a tube all the way to the plants. And the feces from the fish is actually nutrients for the plants to help it grow and the plants filters the water and brings clean water back into the tank. It's all uh, powered by a solar generator and a solar panel. So for bigger plants like tomatoes or broccoli, as you can see here, you can use the hydroponics. So how this one works is that it has two buckets, one having fertilizer mixed with water and one having the plant. This does not make any fertilizer runoffs because the fertilizer goes in a tube into a cycle to the plant. And this is also using a solar panel to power. So for smaller plants, you can use microgreens and sprouting. It's, um, it's when you can, you can eat it when it's a youngling. And the plants that use for this is radish and mung bean sprout. So how can all these uh, prototypes Complement. Well, for this is for smaller plants, you can use sprouting and microgreens. For a little bit bigger, you can use for the the aquaphonics. And the for like bigger plants, like as I said, tomatoes, broccoli, you can use aeroponics and hydroponics. And not only they can you they can have all like these LED or like pumps and these technologies, it also uses tech it uses uh yes. It uses technologies because that technologies makes it uh, sustainable. And the new prototype I'm working on is the spores known as fungi. But why fungi? Well, fungi, it, 
fungi helped six about 650 million years ago it helped terraform our planet and it helped broke down rocks and turned them into soil which helped pave the way into bringing plants and animals to inhabit our land the land so what is fungi doing today well fungi actually is helping interconnect all the plants in the forest which is like the wood wide web so whenever a plant is all is strong and have all the nutrients the sunlight but one weak plant has is in the shadows and don't have anything well the fungi can actually bring these nutrients from the strong plant to the weak plant so the weak plant can grow and this is like the fungi is like the wi-fi of the forest so fun fact on artemis one fungi was aboard to go around the moon they were doing this because they wanted to see the radiation effects on fungi so not only fungi can make food it can also help from it can also help from uh, solar uh, radiation. It also can help terraform planets like it did to our planet 650 million years ago. It can get energy from the sun. It also can make bricks to make houses, and it can also make into medicine for our health. And if you want to learn more about this, you can go to the on the bottom of the screen. You can see there's a link. And you can uh, go on that link and to learn more about the fungi possibilities. Okay, so I also did experiments on this uh, project. As you can see, these are the uh, photos of what I did. There's the oyster mushroom and the shiitake mushroom. I actually tried them these mushrooms and they were really good. And I, it was a uh, a uh, good it was a really good mushroom and I love the uh the experience on making these mushrooms grow so I also the importance of this is to make it sustainable so this is when I went with technology so not only the aquaphonics uses the solar generator and the solar panel but it also has an automatic feeder and it also has two cameras one for the plant and one for the for the fishes and so then i realized that the water started evaporating so then i instead of wasting water i decided to make the water collector this gets water from thin air and it uses a peltire device and condensation to get water and how much water i collected in one night was about 650 million years also uh before when you can only but the uh, lessons learned on this uh, prototype is that you cannot use it when it's cold. So you only use it when it's like moist days. So like before I was, I put it outside when it was winter and it was really cold because I didn't really know because I put it outside. And this, when I made this, it was during winter. And when I put it outside, it was like, there was like snow inside surrounding the uh, Peltire device. And I was so shocked because I live in Florida and it does not snow over here. So it was so fascinating for me. I also wanted to make a, a, a water level alarm because I wanted to know whenever I need to refill the water. So how it has the distance sensor, it has an audible alarm and a visual alarm. And it uses an Arduino and it uses a code as well. And the this is the coding. So as you can see on the right, this is the coding that I did. And how in a smaller formation, it actually how the coding works is that it the distance sensor reads the water. And if it's too far away from the dense from its distance it's supposed to be, it goes to yes and it turns the alarm and waits one minute. And it goes again to no or yes, and it just keeps going again and again. So this is the hardware I built. Uh, it has the distance sensor on the top, the Arduino, and lessons learned on this is that the LED and the buzzer needs resistors because so they don't burn. The coding is really sensitive. So you need to know whenever you need to capitalize something or lowercase, and you need to implement modules. You also have to like know, you have to put things together. So like slowly, so, uh, you whenever you put 
the thing, you have to test it first and then just keep adding until it's correct. So I also shared this about this project. Uh, I also replicated to John Lo Ortiz, who is from the Tagay Tai Siji Special Education Center from the Philippines. And I also shared to Katori Chubos, who is from the Student and the American Horse School in the Lakota Indian Reservation in Allen, South Dakota, and to her coach, Jalisa. So uh, Katori Chubos and Jalisa, would you like to say some words? All right, so uh, I have here Katari. She has her presentation about, uh, she'll be talking about her experience on doing uh, the project. So she's going to share her uh, slide presentation. You're muted. Uh, please unmute yourself so we can hear you. We see your presentation, but you do have to unmute yourself. Victoria, uh, are you able to unmute? Ah, uh, here comes help. Oh, okay. Do not, do not panic, Katori. All of us need help. <laughs> All of us. Ah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Start now. Hello, I'm Katori, and I, and I attend American Horse School on in Allen, South Dakota on the Oglala Sioux Tribe Reservation. I'm very excited to share my experiences while doing this project. This is me putting, this is me setting up the fish tank. I made sure it wasn't too crowded so the fish can freely swim along. This is when I finished setting up the tank. As you can tell in this picture, I was very excited. Once this part of the project was done, we just needed to add the fish. When the fish came in the mail, they were deceased, but then Miss Jalissa got more fish in order the, for the project to continue. After that, we fed and took care of the fish, and then we finally received the plant bed to finish setting up the aquaponic system. The fish are doing well and healthy. I make sure that the fish's tank stays clean and well cut. You can kind of see the plant bed in the pump. The plants are doing well and are only sprouts. By the time this is over, they will have grown more. I think we should grow edible plants like strawberries or cauliflower. We are growing basil leaves and cilantro. When the fish produces feces, the fish's waste goes into a pump that leads into the plant bed. The plants then absorb the nutrients nutrients from the waste, and then the water turn the water. And then the water turns into fresh water. Lastly, the water gets pumped back into the tank. In South Dakota, winters are long and harsh. The uh, advantages of aquaponics is the ability to grow plants indoor. Just to list a few that can grow, like cabbages, strawberries, lettuce, peppers, and cucumbers.
this was the weather yesterday. I'm so glad we are trying to do something useful and productive. As you can see in this picture, you would not be able to grow plants in this environment. It would be way too cold. While with aquaponics, you could grow plants any, at any time and anywhere. Thank you to my teacher, Ms. Jalissa and Nicole, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this project. Also, thank you for the people who helped support this project. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Jalisa, Jalisa and uh, Petori Tubles. I would. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, hold back. Okay. So I also have negotiations with uh, Southern and, and Amazon region of Brazil. And also, is there anyone from the Tagaite City School that also want to share? Or are they there? OK. If they're not here, I'll continue. I also uh, shared during in conferences. I shared this project. And as you can see, these are the conferences. I uh, participated in, in. I also want to share through an app. Well, why an app? Well, I will. I want to not only go through Zoom and talk about it, but also you can just download something and uh, you can just download an app and learn a, more about this project. I also it also has food security because you can grow your own food, and also it leads to a healthier life because you'll because you're growing like vegetables and fruits. And also it's sustainable because you're using growing methods using technology. So the platform that I used was the MIT App Inventor. How it works is App IT App Inventor, it's very simple and you it's all object oriented because it's all labeled and you can just drag something and drop it into the uh, coding and it syncs with the smartphone. So if you can see on the right, there's a smartphone right there and it will show what it will actually look like on the smartphone as an app. So this is uh, the, the, the coding of it. It's just like Legos because when you put like a coding there, you can just add something and it will go to another screen or you can uh, uh, like go to another app. And it's super cool. And the app that it, and this is the app that I created. It has the introduction talking about the about the the project, and also you can just tap on one of the buttons on the bottom, and it will show the methods or the technologies about the the sustainable food production. So I also want to share a video. Okay. Can you uh, hear it? Hello, everyone. So I wanted to give you the opportunity okay. to see the model of the project. So you, you can see it has the solar panel and there's the solar generator behind it. Right over here. There's also all the fish and it works it already has the pump going to the plant and bringing it back down to the tank we also have the automatic feeder as you can see here when i tap over here you, you can actually make this work wherever you are so you can be on the other side of the planet it still work this so here as you can see it's turning to put the food into the tank and we also have the the um, the cameras for it. So you can go over here, and you can see there's a camera over here looking at the fish. So I also wanted to talk about the water level alarm. So it uses a Arduino to control. So as you can see, there's all it connects here and over here. And it uses 
there is also <coughs> it uses a combo to with the code as I said. And this is the the alarm. It has the audio bro alarm and the visual alarm. So as you can see, if it goes too far, it can go alarm. As you can see. And if you want to put it over here in the water, it can also look in water as well. So as you can see, it stopped. Well, if it goes the water level is too low, it can just turn it on. So that's how the water level works. Come everyone, and I want to show you some additional information. So this is actually the poster talking about all the things. I don't want to repeat anything because I already told you. But here it is, and talking about how it works. I also have a brochure talking about my project, the sustainable food production, and it's right here. We also have the water collector right here. As you can see from the picture, it was a different type of model, like it has uh, around it like this. But I wanted to collect much more water, so I did some testing, and I was able to make it into this shape, which got 50 more percent of the water we got before. Thank you so much! Okay, so that was the video, and thank you so much, and if you want to ask any questions, you can ask now. He's, so, whoa, he's got so many things he wants to say. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you say that again? I don't, I, something happened to my volume. Jim is going to explode. He has so many things he wants to say. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> I mean, both of you did amazing work engineering a solution and doing problem solving when things went wrong and learning from what went wrong to what you should do now. Uh, I, I call that going from failure to you know fair because that's what life is it's failure until you make it something that you can use uh, nicole i'm actually afraid of you <laughs> that that Peltier that device i would love just a video on that was that collecting water on the interior volume yeah uh yes because like it, you know about condensation, so it makes it like really cold. So like on the moist in the air goes collected on there and then just drips down into the pan. And that's when we collect the water and put it in the tank. So your design is the opposite of mine. Mine is hot inside and it attracts water to the outside. Yours is cold and oh, fascinating. Interesting that we came to the same conclusion from two different directions. Hmm. Also, I've had zero success with aquaponics. Because I can't, Katori, you need to know, I can't keep fish alive either when they're in an artificial system like that. Yes. But I, I did take a screenshot, Nicole, of your code mm -hmm. and that fabulous Arduino water sensor. Mm -hmm. I'm totally stealing that. I'm just telling you. That's a just, great solution it, set. Yeah, was that Scratch? Scratch mm -hmm. code? Was that Scratch code you were writing in? Yeah, I actually used that... Uh that uh um that website there uh it was like i tried learning it through youtube and i keep trying and trying even though the code didn't work but i i even though sometimes i have to like you know capitalize and i just keep trying and trying until i got it correct so and as you can as you said like when you fish died so one time i had like three fishes so i at the start so i can like test the project it was going really well until uh, I wanted, to, in, because this is when I didn't have the uh, water collector. So I just put fresh water into the, from the tab, the tap, and just put tab water into the tank, and then they all died the next day. Chlorine. Chlorine. Yeah, same problem. That's one of the things that my evaporator does. We could have a show all our own, you and I. I mean... I could just chat with all three of you, you, Katori, and me, for an hour about what you guys want to do to change the world. We, we, we have another gift in July. It's, we can set that up. And Nicole, uh, Katori, would you be interested in partnering with me? Um, yeah, sure. 
If uh, we can have my contacts, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank I will you share so my much. contacts with you. I think that would be a fascinating experience because Katori Tubles, I have been to the Ogala, um, uh, I can't think of the word, um, where your tribe lives in South Dakota. I've been there. Um, and I know what you're dealing with and I know the environment. And it is very dry there and, and it's a long drive. Anywhere you go in South Dakota is a long drive. So I, I get that. I'm fascinated by how all three of us are coming up with different solutions to the same problem with completely different frames of mind. And I would love to talk to kids around the world about that because that's really important to recognize and to embrace. And we all need to know why we think differently, how we think differently, and what we do to think together when we think differently. I would be very interested in it. I'm taking all the time. I apologize. Katori, I have a question though. Uh, you talked about growing things in, in the winter. How do you keep them warm? <laughs> don't, you have to stop muting yourself, my dear. Don't, don't mute yourself anymore. Ah. I believe heaters would keep the pots warm. But you said you're actually great. No, don't don't mute yourself. No, 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 no. Stop, What's stop that? muting yourself. Okay. Okay. So you, you said you're actually are you actually growing things now? Or yeah. is it when? Okay, so now you're growing them. What what are you going to do? You have a plan for warming them up, keeping them warm, something? Just... You know, you could, if you want to keep them warm, you could take them to bed with you. And <laughs> sleep, sleep with the cucumbers. No, I'm serious. The plants would be very happy. Um, <laughs> In the Viking culture in Norway, in the 15th, well, the first of 15th centuries, what Jake is saying is what they actually did. Oh, really? They throw <laughs> potatoes and tubers under their beds because that's where it was warm. Heat is heat. Thermodynamics is thermodynamics. Don't laugh at it until you've done research. That's a great idea, actually. Where do you keep your food? In your house where it's warm or outside? Just reframe the problem, that's all. And don't be shy about wanting to know. There is absolutely no shame in wanting to know more. The shame is not asking. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is good. We have time for one more question or comment, Jim, or anybody. I have another question. I have many, but I'm going to ask one more. Nicole, in your first presentation, when you were showing the oyster and shiitake mushrooms. Yes. One, they looked enormous. <laughs> Um, how big were they actually? Most scientists actually put a scale in front of them so we could see centimeters or how big were they actually? They were like about uh, somewhere like this big. And it was like, uh, it was, it was actually, a, it was like really good. And they were actually the, the hardest ones to do. So, and it, it was really cool and fun to do this experiment with these mushrooms. And it was fascinating how big they went, uh, how big they uh, grew. Okay, can I ask one more question of Katori Tubu? Yep. Katori, do you have any plans for testing water purity, like turbidity or anything, as mm -hmm. the aquaponic cycle goes on to make sure the water stays fresh? Yes. Mm -hmm. If not, I have suggestions. My email is in the chat. Mm -hmm. I would really appreciate it if both of you would at least reach out to me or Julie. There are lots of things that we could share and build on here. This is a brilliant presentation. Thank you. I applaud you both. No, no. I, Thank I, you so I, much. I, I would like to end with a three, two things. First of all, I want to compliment both of the students. This is really Thank wonderful. You. you should be very, Thank very so proud. Much. And then I want to compliment the teacher, okay? Because I know that behind every great student, there is a great teacher, okay? And <laughs> you, you don't get nearly the credit or the acclaim that you deserve, but uh, these young people will go out and do wonderful things and it is because of you. So on behalf of the entire planet, I thank you. Yeah, thank you. Can I say one more thing, Jake, before we okay. leave? 
Please. Tori and Nicole, I need to remind you that there are almost 8 billion people on this planet. And the two of you are on here showing your best. If that doesn't fill you with pride, I'm worried what will. <laughs> Very good. Thank, Thank you. you so much.